ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ So I congratulate the three brahmacharis who are here in this largely unknown town of Bhimavaram. If we say to any somewhat informed person anywhere in the world, London, Sydney, New York, Paris, they've all heard of it. But most people in India have never heard of Bhimavaram. It's a small town. So to come here to preach that is a divine act in the service of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Srila Prabhupada Chaitanya Mahaprabhu famously said Priti vite ache jato nagaradi gram sabatra pracha hoi be moranam so in every town and village of the world Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's name should be preached. So, actually there's plenty of scope for preaching in this whole area. Bhimavaram, Machalipatnam, Narsapur, and all the villages in the area. So, it's a great challenge to preach also. To, to start a new center with just a few men yeah, is not very easy. I know I had experience myself in various places just going with sometimes with one namely myself two three to uh, places where the movement was not known at all or established at all of course uh, here in Bhimavaram the movement is known it's not that it's unknown and the movement is established in other parts of the world but still it's a struggle in in many ways it's uh, easier to go to a bigger center with many devotees uh, in a small center it's a struggle in the sense to get anything done it means that everyone has to do it you have to do it yourself you can't rely on someone else to do it and even to do ordinary things can take up so much of your time and energy just like you know replacing a gas bottle just something like that it can just take up so much of your time and when you want to use it for preaching so it is a struggle in many ways and spiritually it can be a struggle also in as much as when there are many devotees the atmosphere becomes vibrant you get lots of association uh, but there is a lot of mercy in coming to small places and trying to establish something so that's the great plus point plus you learn to do so many things you become uh, self-reliant hopefully uh, so there are pros and cons the main thing is we have to do uh, whatever is required for serving the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu someone has to be on the front line so to speak just like in the army there, there are doctors and people who are engaged in logistics, munitions, supplies, and there are engineers and there are cooks, but all of them put together doesn't doesn't help if there's no one ready to go out on the front lines and fight. You can have all cooks, engineers, doctors and everything, but someone has to do the fighting, so someone has to go out there. And otherwise, there's no meaning to an army. So... Uh, as Srila Prabhupada often said in the in the in the army it's those who take the, the great risk and they're actually engaged in fighting they get special attention especially rewarded by the government of course in the modern age it's not like that they're just you know, if you survive the fight they just abandon you in many countries in America you find so many beggars on the streets who are Vietnam veterans. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, you, there's special mercy there. Um, 
So take this very seriously, the opportunity to preach Krishna consciousness. It means putting our own self-interest behind the mission of serving the Acharyas. In other words, we may like to do this or that or the other in Krishna consciousness. We may like to, we might like to do so many things, but in this situation you just have to do what is required for preaching. There's no space for personal indulgence. One has to do the needful, as Srila Prabhupada often said. But again, there's a lot of mercy in doing so, and we have to remember that people are suffering for want of Krishna consciousness. And our own personal needs shouldn't be the, or, or desires should not be the, for, for a devotee who's really advancing, uh, that shouldn't be his prime consideration. So uh, we want to establish here a center for training brahmacharis also in Training brahmacharis means in that mood of selflessness. That is the essence of brahmacharya in Krishna consciousness. Doing the needful, serving the mission. So uh, we can't expect that everyone will remain a brahmachari forever, but uh, young men if, uh, who take to Krishna consciousness uh, before entering the Grihastha ashram, if they have training for one year, two years, five years or whatever in brahmacharya life that will give them a very solid basis in which to enter the uh, Grihastha Ashram. Uh, now we also are setting up our Van Ashram communities so that people who want to marry can join that and remain in the association of devotees. So, um, of course it's better to if one can tolerate the itching, that example is there of Prahlad Maharaj, Kandutiva Nanasijang Vishaheta Dhira, one who can tolerate the itching of the, that is the sexual urge, he is called Dhira, uh, one who is qualified for making, who is peaceful in mind and who is qualified for making further advancement. Now, uh, it's not expected that everyone who's a brahmachari in the modern age is going to be a brahmachari in just like those of traditional times where young boys were taken fr from the beginning of life. Komara, Acharet, Pragyo, Dharman, Bhagavataniha. From the beginning of life they were trained in Krishna consciousness. That we're attempting now also making guru calls, which fits with the whole Varnashram concept. Bhakti Raghav Maharaj made that book about uh, Guru Varnashram and education, how the two things go together. So uh, that's required. Young boys, they can be trained as brahmacharis, they'll be very pure from the beginning. But those who are becoming brahmacharis after being brought up in modern life you can't expect that they'll have the, the same level of mental purity because the modern age is just based on uh, all the worst things. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that lust, greed and anger are the three gates leading to hell. But this is what is promoted in modern society. And even if you want to be a brahmachari, if you just walk on the street, you'll see this, the posters for the cinema is, is uh, very uh, much uh, deliberately sexually provocative. So it's difficult to be a brahmachari in the modern age, but it's not impossible. By, the, if, by spiritual strength in Krishna consciousness, one can remain uh, detached from all these things, by getting a higher taste in Krishna consciousness, which comes from absorption. If one becomes absorbed in uh, Krishna consciousness, then uh, he won't be so much uh, harassed by these material desires. But they will be there. You can't expect they'll just go away. Srila Prabhupada, in one letter, he 
recommended to a devotee who had complained about being much harassed by, by material desires that he should perform deity worship. But that doesn't mean that every brahmachari should be a pujari. Otherwise, everyone has material desires. So it's not that everyone... Or, or that in, it, in and of itself is the, is the total cure to uh, material desires. Um, in brahmachari life, one should uh, be very dedicated, to uh, ready to follow the order of the guru, and um, study. That's the, one of the main functions of the brahmachari ashram, to study the books, to, to, to become absorbed in spiritual sound. Brahma. Brahma means spiritual existence. It also means the Vedas. So Brahmachari means who's absorbed in spiritual existence and who studies Shastra. So, uh, especially Brahmacharis, they should spend time every day. Sometimes you may be very, very busy, but as far as possible, spend time every day studying Srila Prabhupada's books. And that will give spiritual strength and help to keep the mind focused. We find in Bhagavad Gita that uh, fixity of purpose that is required for advancement in spiritual life. So uh, you'll get that in by reading Srila Prabhupada's book. Srila Prabhupada himself was the uh, the uh, what would we say, the epitome or the the ideal of vivasayatmikabuddhi, focused intelligence. And you'll, you'll find in, in Srila Prabhupada's books, it's, it's all focused on surrendering to Krishna, being a pure devotee of Krishna. There are so many topics covered, but the focus is one. Uh, so, by reading those books, we get that that helps us to get spiritual strength. So uh, you can take that and go forward in Krishna consciousness, uh, become knowledgeable for preaching. People will bring so many questions. Just like someone asked you a question the other day, why is, if Lord Shiva is a Vaishnava, why does he have this... Uh, a different kind of tilak. So you d you won't find the answer directly in Prabhupada's books, but by studying deeply and considering shravan, manan, nididhyasana. Shravan is supposed to be followed by contemplation of what one has uh, studied or heard, specifically heard, and then uh, come to a platform of deep absorption in that, in which Prabhupada said that if you just study my books, all the answers to your questions will come. So, uh, someone asked me that question also. That it must have been the same evening. He came up to me and asked me that question. And I said, well, the Lord, that you, if you think about it from reading what we've learned in Prabhupada's books, then... Uh, the answer is that Srila, Lord Shiva has a very unusual role to play. That although he's the topmost Vaishnava, he takes a, a role as if he... Well, I didn't explain it all exactly like this, but he takes the role as if he was the Supreme Lord for the sake of very fallen people who cannot conceive of the Supreme Lord as he actually is. So, uh, he's a great, a great Vaishnava, or the greatest Vaishnava in this world. But he uh, plays a double role, you could say. Again, as Shankaracharya, he plays a double role. He teaches a wrong philosophy, and in between, you know, he, he says, Narayana Paravyakta, Narayana is beyond the unmanifest. Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam. So like this. Study the books, 
dedicate yourself, uh, take advantage of this opportunity actually to serve. You get a great opportunity to serve, which uh, to do pioneering work, and get special mercy. But keep yourself strong and do that. And then afterward, like I say, not everyone may be uh, fully dedicated in this way throughout their life. But afterward, there are so many things that can be done in Krishna consciousness. But now you're here, so try to do something for Srila Prabhupada's mission here. I'm not saying this to you. You've taken this up. So it's your... It's your responsibility. You're not here for just temporary to get married later. That's not for you. All right, Hare Krishna. Now you can give a summary. But I think this was especially for brahmacharis. So those, we have... uh, one devotee who's a bit past the age this lifetime for being a brahmachari. Now this gentleman, he's not going to be a brahmachari. Brahmachari means young, or it can mean someone who from childhood they're a brahmachari and they just remain as a brahmachari. So in that, that can also be. Once one's been a grihasta, there's actually no question of being a brahmachari, although sometimes... In Iskon, especially in the West, we have uh, what Prabhupada said, you are not brahmacharis, you are bachelor daddies. Prabhupada had a, a wry sense of humor. 